Alrighty then, it looks like it's two o'clock already. All right. Hope you're having a fantastic day, by the way. And that, you know, this being the second day of the week, you're all rested and you're ready to uh, start kicking some goals. All right, my name is Prosper Taruinga, by the way, founder and CEO of Live Long Digital where we try and help digital entrepreneurs like yourself to start, scale, and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. So obviously for the next 30 minutes, I want to help you to actually earn more money within your business and to do it with less struggle. I see Jensen has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my man, for tuning in. And Abe, how are you doing, brother? Thank you so much. Now today we're talking about ideas and I put together a simple um, uh, success formula that was formulated by the Heat brothers in their book Made to Stick. Now they're talking about how ideas are simple, how ideas are unexpected, how ideas are concrete, how ideas are credible and how ideas are emotional and you gotta tell stories around the ideas that you have for your business. Joanne, thank you so much for tuning in. Right, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but as an entrepreneur or as a business person, every time you go to bed or every time you're out and about in the city, you see something and you're like, oh my God, this could be a good idea if I turn this into a business or this could be a good idea if I did this. And then when you go home and you talk to maybe your spouse or you talk to your friends and then you're like, guys, I think I've got this massive idea. Maybe this could work. And then they're like, nah. Maybe somebody has tried it or they're like, nah, it's, it's been done in uh, Hong Kong or it's been done already. And then that sort of disheartens you. How many, how many has, has that sort of happened to you? Or how many times have you come up with an idea and, you know, you went on to tell the people that mattered to you and they just, you know, brushed you off like that. So I'm here to tell you that I want you today to have the last laugh where your good ideas that have been ridiculed or when people didn't understand what you were trying to do, maybe you're trying to start a video or like Chad who's studying a, a massive podcast and how are you doing by the way? And if somebody um, was coming up to you to, I mean, if, if you've got an idea of, of studying a live show like this for 30 minutes every single day and people are like, ah, nobody's going to sit around for it. Nobody really listens to this stuff anyway. And people don't even like look at it and post-production, etc. What to do when you have been disheartened by the people that are around you about your ideas and how to actually make them stick and for you to actually have the last laugh. Okay, so at the end of the day, I must really, really uh, pre-phrase this and tell you that it's not going to be easy. It's going to be the hardest thing ever to try and convince people that are used to seeing you in a certain light for them to start seeing you in a whole different place. Okay, because you know what, us humans, we're creatures of habit and we don't want our patterns interrupted. We don't want our way of lives interrupted. And we don't really want that the way we are used to is sort of disrupted by somebody that we did not think was going to be any better than where they are right now. Okay, so you might have all these ideas that you, you, you might be afraid of bringing them to life or you might be nervous that maybe people are going to take you the wrong way or that people are not going to like it or it's just completely too much work. First of all, I'm going to tell you something. Kudos for you for having an idea. The second thing you got to do is implement. Okay, ideas are a dime a dozen and I know in the States or some other places, if you only just have an idea or if you, um, if you, you know, go to some brokers, they can sell you, um, you know, uh, business ideas for you to, to have a look at. It's only the implementation that then matters. All right. So they're going to be naysayers no matter what. It's not starting with you. It's not going to end with you and, 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 and you being that person with that idea. If somebody sees it and sees it as lucrative and, um, you know, way ahead of you and, don't, and you haven't implemented, is that anyone's fault? 
A lot of people are crying foul and saying, oh, Uber stole my idea or something like that. It's only because they didn't implement and they listened to those people that were just around them that had no same imagination as them. Tammy, thank you so much for tuning in. So today I really want you to have the last laugh and why your idea is the best idea ever and how you should actually go to market with it and let the market decide. All right. Don't let those people that are around you stop you from going ahead and getting what you think is right for you. Most of the time, it's only because they just want to protect you. They're only listening to the fact that the only businesses that never make it, um, you know, you know, there's, there's like 95% of businesses that never make it, but your business has not been part of that statistic. So don't give them that, you know, satisfaction of proving themselves right, okay? So I'm going to give you ideas according to the book, uh, Make It Stick, on how to make your idea really simple, how to make it unexpected, how to make it concrete, and how to make it credible and very emotional so that people can latch onto it, so that people can buy from you and you can start a business that's profitable and enjoyable why am I saying this why am I coming to you today mentioning this yesterday on my profile I put up a post and I said what do you do and why should people care all right a lot of people saw that and it's a very intimidating question what is it that you do and why should people care about it all right we're living in an age where every person who's got an idea and if they have a computer and a pair of, um, you know, track bottoms and a t-shirt, they can start a business. How is your business and your idea going to be differentiated in the market and how is it going to last long enough for you to actually start making money off of it? All right. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds of business ideas that, first of all, they just die on the lips when people talk about them at a barbecue and then uncle sam who's never run a business goes on to say oh i think it's not gonna work you know why because johnny from down the road tried it and he failed dismally don't do that i don't want to see that happening to you yeah and then sometimes you then and then maybe two years down the line you then hear somebody coming up with the exact same idea because when ideas come onto the universe they're not just shown to you when ideas come and they're given to people, they're given a few strategic people, um, you know, to implement. The one that goes to market first with it is the one who then becomes the pioneer. All right. You can put it back to the times when the Wright brothers were trying to, um, you know, start flying or when, when, when the Wright brothers were putting together their flying machine. A lot of people told, thought they were ridiculous. A lot of people thought they were out of their mind. But how do people transport themselves today? How do people fly from different places? How has their invention and their tenacity and their, you know, their, their personality brought life into many businesses? And I also think if planes were not invented, we probably wouldn't have the internet. So many things have just been made possible because somebody put up their hand and said, I'm not going to listen to the naysayers. I am actually going to be working hard to make sure that this idea comes to life. Okay. Now, Chad is saying you have to add your personality to the business because you are the only one who has your personality. And Chad also says you bring personality every day. <laughs> Pretty much. But do you know what I mean? A lot of people are stopped in their tracks to continue and... Even if they do go ahead with the business, nobody actually knows what they are doing because they're not articulating it well. I speak to a lot of businesses every single day. Their ideas are good, but they're not simple. Their ideas are good, but they're not revolutionary. Their ideas are good, but they're not concrete. Their ideas are good, but they're not credible. Their ideas are good, but they don't, you know, they're not emotional enough for somebody to want to take action immediately. All right, and they, they don't have any stories behind them. I would want to tell you today that your life story and your experiences have greater importance and market value than you could ever imagine. So don't ever let or take that away from you or take that for granted. Find out about around what you have done, things that you have accomplished or things that you have achieved what ideas can come into life and then utilize your life story in the process all right 
you would know that I came in from Zimbabwe six years ago and, you know, I started off with the whole modeling industry. I'm still doing that. And through that, I started working with other restaurants and I started working with other businesses. And now I own a digital marketing uh, business. Your idea may start off as something, but then if you keep implementing it, you will start seeing that you can do more with what you already have. All right. So half the time, the people that are around you, they might not see it. They might not fathom the fact that you can start off walking on the ramp as a model or just being an African boy like me, being a model in Melbourne, one of the most livable cities in the world, you know, and, and being called every single day, prosper, you're available, we'll pay you two grand, we'll pay you 4,000 just to show face, you know? And then when you then utilize whatever experience and lifetime value that you have and put it to fruition, a lot of people don't understand it unless you can articulate it more to them so that they can actually follow you, support you, because people only support what they've helped to build. All right. I put up a video uh, not so long ago about how you need to have the people around you knowing exactly what it is that you do so that they can support you so that they can talk about your idea at the barbecue where they go at bingo or wherever make it very simple so that people can actually understand and they can articulate that for you that makes your marketing easier that makes people encourage you to do more and give you more ideas to expand on your program all right but if you just hold your idea onto yourself and hope that maybe one day some investor is going to come in or some market is just going to open up. Who is going to know about that idea? All right. So, you know, and some people would laugh at you. That's a wrong crowd. That's the wrong people. How many people laughed at the Wright brothers when, when they mentioned that they wanted to, to, to start flying? How many people laughed at Alexander Graham Bell when he mentioned that he wanted to, to start creating a telephone or a telegram? How many people laughed when, um, is it JF Kennedy said they were going to put a man on the moon? All ideas start off as ridiculous. How many people laughed when people talked about the bicycle? How many people thought it was ridiculous? How many people thought Henry Ford was stupid for coming up with an automobile that has now transformed the way we travel? What if your idea is the next best thing or whatever you're doing right now, if you're not articulating it enough and speaking to the right people who actually share the same emotional sentiments about your stuff and you're not doing things that make you credible enough, then you're not going to move your idea any further. There's people that are making a lot of money by creating, what is it, a pet rock or something like that. What's that guy's name? Um, the guy who... Uh, What's his name? Uh, I think uh, Gary, Gary Dial or something like that. The millionaire who came up with the ridiculous idea of a, a pet rock. Look him up. You will see it. There's a lot of major breakthroughs that are out there just because people are putting themselves out, telling their stories, all right, enhancing their credibility and simplifying their message day in and day out. Every single day when you ask, somebody asks you, Chad, what do you do and who should care? What are you telling them? Who are you doing what you're doing for? Why should that person care enough to want to know more from you? And if the, in the event of that happening, what are you doing to ensure that you're filling up their brain and their idle time with your content, with your ideas, and, 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 and with your stories? Yeah, it keeps coming back to that. How are you making them emotionally invested in what you've got to say? That's the reason why a lot of ideas are not sticking around because we are personally not investing back into our business and we're just hoping that Facebook ads or PPC ads are going to change it for us. Half the time, it, the onus is on you to actually make sure you stand up and say, okay, I've put in this 10,000 hours, somebody's got to pay attention now. You know, every single time I always repeat this, that you've got to have a message that is going on to a market. And if that market understands that message, utilize whatever media you can in order to make that idea stick. 
And people are so busy. Don't try and be all complicated when you're trying to tell people what it is that you do. What do you do? Hi, my name is Prosper and I help you make enough money without the less struggle or technical jargon that all the other marketers out there are trying to present to you. Hi, I'm Jane. I will help you fit enough so that you can fit into your wedding dress. That's a fitness instructor. Hi, my name is Trish. I will help you visualize, I will help people visualize your brand so that they can spot you in a sea of other logos. That's a graphic designer. Try and simplify it so much so that you can actually stand out because everybody is so cluttered with enough information that is not going to getting them anywhere. And especially if your idea is revolving around people that would actually have to pay for it, make sure you put out the minimum viable product so that people can actually test it out, break it, and then you would know that you actually have proper feedback from the market. Because what we now face is people that are spending two years, three years, four years just sitting on their own in their computer working on a website, working on their branding, and nobody even knows what they do. By the time they come out, they're already frustrated because they are trying to re recuperate or resuscitate all the time that they've lost trying to build their brand. Nobody cares. It only takes one second for somebody to just swipe right. You know, and they don't care about the 10,000 hours that you put in, you know, trying to b bring the brands to life. Okay? When, when, when they started, nobody would imagine, you know, right now, life without Google. But when they started, they nobody even cared what they were. It sounded impossible. You know, the idea of actually basing, you know, a business site to only send traffic to other sites, it was bad enough because it, it meant spam. It meant that people were, you know, people's viol your, uh, privacy was being violated. But when Google entered the market, you know, there were, there were probably other 20 competitors in there, you know, Bing, um, uh, who else was there? Yahoo was there as well. And, and Yahoo was offered a chance to buy um, Google, but then they didn't. Because they thought they were going nowhere. Yeah? So, some ideas may not seem logical today. That doesn't mean you don't have to implement. All the ideas that you're seeing coming into market today, there's five, six, ten years prior, you know, working on them, trying and testing, Kickstarter, all that stuff that you, you are not to told about. And when you hear an idea, you're like, oh my God, this guy's just worked on it. But you're not told of the stories that was going on behind the scenes in order to bring that idea to, to fruition. Yeah? So that's the reason why when people hear about something for the first time, they laugh at it. You know? It's, it's, it will be a different idea. It's different from what they're used to because humans are creatures of habit. But don't let that deter you. Keep working. Keep keep putting in the work and actually making sure that you're making your idea come to life. Yeah? Sometimes people just don't understand something and they decide not to want to understand it and they just throw it away as if it's not a good idea. But if you know in your heart of hearts that this is something you really want to pursue, keep working at it. And once you do it, make sure that you know it good enough to make it simple Make it a bit different to what is there already, concrete and very credible, and put an emotional stance to it so that people would follow it through. Yeah? So when I ask you today, what is it that you do? And who cares? And why, or why should anybody care about what you do? What would your answer be? Yeah? Because you have to differentiate your idea from anybody else in the market. Because in the business world, that distinction can be a very huge advantage. The model might be the same, you know, but customers need to find, you know, that differentiating position. What is your idea making that person's life better or different? How are you going to solve their problem better than X is doing already in the market? Yeah? Yeah? And maybe sometimes when people laugh at your idea, they, they would be warranted. Maybe it's an idea that probably won't work. But if you then create the credibility, yeah, 
by putting out content, by actually talking about it and, and showing that you are a thought leader in the, in, in the whole industry, people will start following through to your idea because people are always looking for leaders. And if you don't show up as a leader and stand up for your idea, everybody will always put you down. Your family to start off with. You know why? Because they don't want to disrupt the relationship they have with you already. Because once you start becoming somebody that you were not before, the, the, the dynamics change. They now have to respect you in some weird way which they don't want. You know? They don't want to change what it is. Yeah? So a lot of people have come up with ideas some have worked, some have not. You probably are harboring some ideas in your brain right now. Just make sure they're simple enough for you to articulate it to the next person so that the idea gets passed on. And if it's a really good idea, don't stop yourself from putting it out there in the world. You know why? Because you never know how that idea will change somebody's life. We all know Steve Jobs when he came up with the prototype for the iPhone, you know. A lot of critics were quick to point out, ah, oh, nobody's going to want this. Oh, look at the touch screen. It's going to break the first moment it goes into anybody's pocket. And, you know, they, they went on and they were afraid that the public was not, not going to accept such a feature. But guess what? Every man and his dog now use a touch screen. Yeah? And you know what was his response when, when all the naysayers were talking to him? He said, they'll get used to it. That has to be your mantra. If your product is good enough and you vouch for it and you really, really know that it's something that you want to put out there and somebody needs to know about it, they'll get used to it. But that just doesn't happen on its own. You got to put out the content, put out all the credibility stuff, put out the research that you've done, find out if it's something that actually solves a problem, find out if it's actually needed. And if your idea is backed by you and your life story and the emotion that went into creating it, then we'll read about you. I can't wait to hear your success story. All right, so sometimes some people just copy and paste other people's ideas. That's the reason why you are not connected to what you're doing right now for some people. Because you're just copying other people's stuff. Your life story and your experience is a unique footprint on this, our universe. Dig deep into what you've done, who you've met, what lives you've changed and create something out of that. Then when you're done, relate to the people that need to know what you're doing. And then when you're done, simplify it enough to put it out there in the world. I promise you one day somebody will raise up their hand and will be like, I'm the one that you're supposed to help. And if people don't understand you right now, they'll get used to it. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a cocky reaction because he knew what he was creating, but it actually illustrates an interesting concept that relates to public's acceptance of new technologies and products. You know, generally, you know, the spark that ignites a new trend is usually something when it hits the market for what the product is, it's usually too early or people don't understand it or people don't even want to understand it. That's why you got to make it simple because nobody wants to hear it. Their minds are already filled up with, with stuff. It could be an app that you're coming up with. Somebody's already thinking, oh my God, is it yet another app in my phone? If it's another website, people are like, oh, is it yet another website I got to browse through? If it's another fitness program, they're like, is it yet another fitness program I got to browse through? Just make sure it's very simple for people to grasp what you are offering to them. And if you're persistent and you're consistent with it, with it, sooner or later, somebody's going to show up knocking on your door and say, I'm the one. It becomes an explosive trend. You go on to tipping point and we'll be reading about you. You know? But it always starts with people not noticing you. It always starts with people not getting you. You got to make it simple for them. You got to make it emotional enough for them to want to pay attention. Nobody's ever ready for your idea. Nobody's ever up to the point of, oh, I thought I knew about that. Let me jump on to that. Nobody cares. You have got to make them care. So right now, my question to you is, what are you selling and who needs it?
It might seem ridiculous, but once it takes off, once you know who your market is and what your product is, it would be undeniably brilliant because you'd be different to 95% of the marketers or online business people out there that are just peddling product after product. Everything seems strange at first sight and that's exactly why your ideas are unique and you've got to put them out there. All right, and how do you do that? You put out a proper strategy that you find the people that actually like what you're doing Find what pain you can solve from them and what payoff they'll be getting from your idea and what product that will correspond to that. And before you know it, you're already engaging people and people are educated about the new thing that you've come up with. You're inspiring them to want more and in the process you're providing value. That then positions you as the person who can take them from where they are to the promised land, which is what your new idea will bring them to. Before you know it, it becomes so easy. You're solving problems. You're only just putting calls to action and people already know, like, and trust your stuff. You now have, you know, the authority to start selling big on your new idea and you've branded yourself all through the process. You know why? Because you made your idea simple. It was unexpected. And you made it really, really simple. You made it concrete because it has genuine results. You got yourself credible by, you know, making sure you're providing all that content. You struck a few emotions and you say a few stories around that. So the stories can be the people that you've helped, the, 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 the you know, the, the troubles you went through, all that stuff. That's how an idea sticks. You just don't put it out there, put out a website and expect people to come. Build it and they will come, ceased to exist when the internet became a thing. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what can you learn from this show today? I was really, maybe really trying to say that your idea, your story and whatever you have right now, try and intertwine it because if you're not creating and relating for the people that you're expecting money from, it's going to be hard for you to first of all, stand out. Second of all, for your idea to stick. And third of all, to actually really, really make a mark with your business right now. So if you apply these lessons that we put today, you need to be bold with your ideas. That's the first part. Because nobody's going to understand you right from the get-go. you got to make them want it. You know, no matter how stupid you, it might sound in your head, you know what I mean? It may not be the fact. It may not be the case. I talked about the guy who came up with the... Um, uh, the pet rock Yeah, just prove the strength of your ideas with more than just you know, you know fleeting opinions of others And also you want to be very careful where you're getting advice from Because these people if they haven't done anything, um, you know along those lines They're not going to be the best people for you for, for to give you advice to go ahead with your business Yeah And also there's a lot to do with timing you know, you can't come up with the best, um, you know, camera that uses film at the moment because people are over film. All right. You, it has to do a lot with timing. Look at what's happening around you. And that's why people laugh at some of these ideas because they've probably been done and there's foolproof. I mean, there's, there's proof of, you know, um, failure that's everywhere. So you want to make sure that your timing and your idea is actually nailed down to what is current or what is going to be happening in the next 10 years. Because right now, if you're going to be starting a business, you have to look 10 years deep. Is VR going to be a thing? What? How is my product going to be sold? Who is going to uh, understand what I'm doing right now in 10 years to come? Because that's when your overnight success time is going to come in. Yeah. Right now, can you imagine, you know, a new search engine coming in to, to, to dethrone Google? Not this year, not the next year, but maybe in the next 10 years. You know why? Because voice is going to be the next best thing. So look at what is happening. Is your business right now, you know, going to last or survive for the next five years? Are you doing enough? To make sure that your ideas are not going to be laughable. Because you put in the work already. 
You know, you, you get a reward for it. All right? So also try and see if your idea, once you've put it into place, how widely acceptable would it be? Because if it's just going to help a certain number of people, what happens if that number of people grows up and they don't want your product anymore? If you're just looking at a certain age group, what if those, if your, your age group is 16 year olds that are girls and going to a particular phase in their life, what happens when they grow up? Do you have a continuity for them to continually use your product? So that's the reason why a lot of businesses fail because their ideas are not scalable enough. That's a story for another day, but you know, I just wanted to say guys, the next time somebody laughs at your idea and it doesn't make sense at this current level, just take a step back and think at the bigger picture. Are you making sure that your idea is simple enough? Is it radical enough or unexpected? Is it concrete enough to last or survive through the next five years? Is it credible enough by you being the person that can actually bring it to life? Are you putting in all the emotional stuff in it? You know, like, um, you know, why would somebody want to care about your brand? And are there any stories, success stories, your stories, what you've been through? And is the timing right? All right, consistency will then bring that idea to luck and maybe a bit of luck. All right, and then I promise you, my friend, you will be the one that loves last. All right, thank you so much for tuning in today and hope this is going to help somebody. If not, share it with somebody that needs to hear it at this particular moment. They might be going through a hard time trying to bring their idea to life while it is them that they're probably just stopping themselves. All right. I want you to be successful. I want you to earn more money with less struggle. I want you to gain recognition within your industry that you actually love. And I want you to attract and gain more opportunities that will energize you to be and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. This has been Prosper, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the comments below if you've got any questions. Bye for now.